ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரி கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரே ஹரி ஹரி ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரே ஹரி ஹரி ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரே ஹரி ஹரி ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி ஹரி ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் ராம் ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி ஹரே கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரி 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 ராம் ஹரி ராம் 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 ஹரி ஹரி சோ லெஃப்ட் கேன் ஓபன் யுவர் ஐஸ் so welcome to today's class on bhagavad gita so we are discussing the topic building resilience how to navigate through life's obstacles so thank you for joining today's class so let me uh, share my screen so that we can go through today's uh, shloka let me know when you all can see my screens Just give me one second. Yeah. Yes. So can you all see my screen? So this is the shloka for today, Bhagavad Gita 2.14. So who's going to read it today? Nabya, can you try reading the shloka today? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I'll read it. So you repeat after me. So this is how we usually read scriptures. It's a good practice if you guys can have your book as well. Okay. we'll have to get uh, habituated reading from the book so that's the goal okay so i'll read i'll read you repeat after me okay matra sparshastu kaunteya 
मात्रा स्पर्श तो कांतीय शीतोष न सुख दुख दाह शीतोष न सुख दुख खाद आगमापाइनो नित्यास आगमापाइनो तम स्थिति क्षव भारत तम स्थिति तब भारत शीतोष्णुखद आगमापाइनो नित्यास आगमापाइनो नित्यास तम स्थिति क्षस्व भारत तम स्थिति सत्सव भारत गुड नाइस सो दिस इज हाउ यू रीड श्लोकास सो वन बेनिफिट व्हेन एवर यू रीड अ पर्टिकुलर श्लोका इवन इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर श्लोका when we read that shloka and when we hear it that transcendental sound vibrations so what we call as spiritual sound vibrations they can purify your mind so that is the power of mantras the word mantra means man means mind and tra means to deliver your mind so purification of mind happens whenever you recite shlokas so as a part of you know navigating through life's obstacles each and every time when we are sad what we'll have to understand is we have an opportunity to reorient our life towards krishna so when we have that opportunity then we also can take shelter of krishna just by chanting the holy name or chanting on beats or by reciting certain set of shlokas from bhagavad gita or from different scriptures like shrimad bhagavatam okay so when we are not having clarity in life or when we are afraid or when we are having a lot of difficult situations and we are not able to make decisions so there are certain set of shlokas and scriptures which we can take shelter of so when we get into this habit of you know reciting shlokas so whenever it's a good habit of you know 10 10 minutes every day 15 minutes every day we can always pick certain set of shlokas actually i was like i'm i'm reading the book every day like almost every day not every day but like four five days in a week oh nice after mm-hmm. chanting mm-hmm. yeah but i'm just like i'm not reading the shlokas just the english translation that's okay that's okay so reading is also a good habit so uh, others people you know whenever you have like five or 10 minutes time right you cannot really sit and think and read and focus right so you can take uh, i'll give you a certain set of shlokas also in the whatsapp group so whenever you have time you can just see that on your mobile and you can you know recite that set of shlokas which is uh, very very uh, powerful so that also you can uh, make it as a habit okay so now let's go to the word to word meaning so when actually you read bhagavad gita in this format the sanskrit you don't have to actually know sanskrit so how to pronounce sanskrit a line on top a dash on top of a m m a becomes ma matra and on top of s you have a small uh, accent here right that become sh so sparshas so that is a matra sparshas so that is how you pronounce and you see dots somewhere below the letters right so it means dukha h so da h so you the pronunciation changes okay so similarly thumbs you will stress a bit so if you open the bhagavad gita in the last so for each and every syllable how to pronounce the pronunciation guide will also be there so you get to understand the shlokas from the word to word meaning at the same time you can also learn sanskrit so the way this book is structured you have shlokas you have word to word meaning and you have translations so some people just read the translations and the purport which is good it's a very good habit to do on a daily basis one or two pages every day 
But if you want to actually study Sanskrit also, it is possible. So it depends on how you utilize this particular book. But end of the day, every day, spending 15-20 minutes with Bhagavad Gita is very good for purification of your mind. So say, for example, in life, if you want to make $1 million or if you want to make, say, 1 lakh rupees, you will have a plan for it. You will have to set short-term goals and you will have to set long-term goals. Similarly, even in spirituality, even if you want to practice spirituality, you need goals. So yesterday, in the retreat, I was talking about how to set goals. The people found it really, really useful. So because in any practice you do in life, so if you don't know what you actually want, then it is very, very difficult to understand whether you are going in the right direction. So it's always good to set goals and you'll be happy with your goal. You'll be able to measure your goal only if your goal is driven by a purpose in life. So a lot of people will have different purpose in life, right? And accordingly, you align your goals. So our purpose in life is to know who is God and to understand God. So it is a lifelong journey when we take up to any spiritual practice. So in order to meet that particular, you know, that is the actual purpose of human life. In order to achieve that particular purpose, you need to set small, small goals. So we can have like an hourly goal like that, you know, we have an hourly goal now for the next one hour, no matter what happens, we are not going to get distracted. So this is an hourly goal. Then we can have daily goals and we can have weekly goals. So try to spend at least, you know, 15, 20 minutes with Bhagavad Gita, which will purify your mind. You can always, you know, apply that concepts. So you can relate it to your day-to-day -day life. So today we'll see one such uh, shloka, which uh, Krishna says to Arjuna, how to deal with the obstacles in life. So I'll just read the word to a meaning. Matra sparsha, sensory perception. Tu only. Kaunteya, O son of Kunti. Shita, winter. Ushna, summer. Sukha, happiness. Dhukha, pain. Daha, giving. Agama, appearing. Apayinaha, disappearing. Anityaha, non-permanent. Tan, all of them. Titikshaswa, just try to tolerate. Bharata, O oh, descendant of Bharata dynasty. So, translation. So, this is the actual meaning of this particular shloka. O oh, son of Kunti, the non permanent appearance of happiness and sadness and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. They arise from sense perception. O oh, Sian of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. So let's read the purport. So the purport is the Acharya's translation. So all the Acharyas who are practicing Bhakti Yoga or following Krishna's instructions in Gita, they give a deep explanation to understand the purport for our benefit. So this is the best way in which we can understand what we can learn from this particular purport. So who can read the purport for me? So who can try to read the purport? So Amrita, can you read the purport for us? Yes. Yes, go for it. In the proper discharge of duty, one has to learn to tolerate non-permanent appearances and disappearances of happiness and distress. According to Vedic injunction, one has to take his bath early in the morning, even during the month of March, January to February. It is very cold at the time, but in, but in spite of that, a man who abides by the religious principles does not hesitate to take his bath. Similarly, a woman who does not hesitate to cook in the kitchen in the months of May and June, the hottest part of the summer season. One has to execute his duty in spite of climatic inconven inconveniences. Similarly, to fight is the religious principle of the Chetriyas. And although one has to fight with some friend or relative, one should not deviate from his prescribed duty. One has to follow the prescribed rules and regulations of religious principles in order to rise up to the platform of knowledge because by knowledge and devotion, only K 
can one liberate himself from the clutches of Maya illusion? The two, the two different names of address given to Arjuna are also significant. To address him as Kaunteya signifies his great blood relations from his mother's side, and to address him as Varata signifies his greatness from his father's side. From both sides, he is supposed to have a great heritage. A great heritage brings responsibility in the matter of proper discharge of duties. Therefore, he cannot avoid fighting. Great. So, I'll read the translation again, and then we'll discuss this particular verse. So, O son of Kunti, the non-permanent, no, note this particular word, non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course. So this is another important word. So the first important word is non-permanent and the next important word is due course. Are like the appearance and disappearance of summer and winter seasons. They arise from sense perception so how do happiness and sadness are identified through our senses through our mind one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed so how are we going to tolerate without being disturbed so let me stop my screen sharing for now so how can we understand this particular verse so if you see this particular world, right, things keep changing again and again. So a lot of people say, I am happy. A lot of people say, I am sad. So what does that particular word means to them, right? So happiness may be something for you and happiness may be something for somebody else, right? So what you define as success is the measurement of your particular happiness. So what may be success to you may be success to somebody else. So that depends on the goals of different people. So now when we are not able to achieve a particular goal or when we are not able to achieve what we actually want, then we get disturbed, right? Or some things around us which is happening, which is not according to our expectations, which is not according to how we see this particular world, then we get disturbed. So what in this particular verse, what Krishna is telling to Arjuna is that happiness and sadness is non-permanent, right? So those are basically temporary. It will not last for a longer period of time. And he also says it disappears in due course. So it is very important for us to understand that, right? This world is designed to give pain to us. So in between this so much of pain, we get a little bit of pleasure. So we have so much pain and pleasure, pain and pleasure. So when we have something that gives pleasure to us, which means we are putting our happiness on that particular object or on that particular person, or on that particular family of people. So when that is not responding to us the way we want, we become distressed or we become anxious. We think that we are not able to, you know, make them understand. We are not able to understand what we want. So are we clear on what we want is the question. So when we say these things are basically non permanent which means so we all start expecting things to be happening according to the way we want right so we put so much of efforts but then somewhere when something happens the way we don't want we get sad so we need to understand that be it happiness or be it sadness it can last only for a certain amount of time right so things around us may not always be according to how we want. So sometimes we'll have to adapt. So Krishna says in this particular verse, one who tolerates them and who is undisturbed can attain the path of liberation. So what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita is, so don't get carried away when 
things turn out to be the way you want. Don't get too upset when things don't appear to be the way you want to perceive them. So what we think as reality, right? We think that, you know, making money would make me happy. You know, getting a particular house that makes me happy, getting a particular car that makes me happy, having a particular set of family that makes me happy. But in the end, if you put your happiness on these particular objects or on these particular people, and if you are not connected to Krishna, right, through any form of yoga, so what we are talking here is Bhakti Yoga. So if you put your happiness on these particular things, and if you're not connected to Krishna, so that is when you become sad. So you get disturbed when they don't function the way you want. The world doesn't function the way you want or people don't listen to you. So some of you may be moms here or some of you may be students here. And some of you might have been in relationships. Some of you might have disturbances in your family. Some things may be taking too much time and all of us may be in different circumstances right so that is depending on how we have set our goals now if something is giving you stress which means your goal is not aligned with the ultimate purpose of life so right now we all make choices so we all make decisions according to what we think success means to us so now, sometimes you may be able to achieve your goal or sometimes you may not be able to achieve your goal. So during, you might have set a goal for like two years or three years, but in between, in one year time, you still have a lot of time to achieve your goal. But in between that one year time, you might feel a lot of pain. You might feel a lot of stress because dynamics around you keeps changing. So that's why Krishna says these are happiness and sadness are like different seasons, summer and winter seasons. With time, they automatically vanish, right? So it is very important for us to understand from this particular verse that we are dealing with things which is temporary. Even the love we have for people in this particular world is for a finite period of time. We are all eternal spirit souls, right? Even the love which we have for our kid, the love which we have for our parents, so they are only for a certain number of years. So we know that we have had different bodies in the past. And depending on whatever desires we have, we are going to have different bodies after our death. So if, you are, if your soul is not completely purified, then according to whatever desires you have, then you get the next body. So that is the right understanding. So we might, we might find it difficult to digest this particular point. So it doesn't mean that we don't have to love our kids or we don't have to love our family. So the right understanding comes here is we must not be too attached, saying that this is my kid and this is my family or this is my money or this is my car, this is my building. We need to understand for a fact that whatever money you earn in this particular life, it is already predetermined depending on uh, whatever your karma is. So when you are in your mother's womb, the wealth or the education, the amount of times you breathe, that determines your lifespan. It is all, your lifespan is actually based on the quota of your breath. How you consume it is up to you. So when you're angry, you tend to breathe fast. So you consume more from your quota. When you're involved in like bad habits, you consume more breath, like drinking, smoking. And when you are involved in over sexual activities you breathe really really fast so you consume your quota when you do things against dharma so if you follow your dharma whatever wealth you want it comes to you in due course that's what krishna says in due course these things disappear so in due course these things appear as well so these are the like seasonal changes so not always things can turn out the way you want so you have to perform your duties as a sacrifice or as a service to Krishna. So Krishna has given us this particular body in this particular life. So things around us keep changing. So which means we are not these bodies. We are eternal souls. We are part and parcel of Krishna. And we also saw our soul resides in our heart. 
So when we say that things around us keep changing, our mind changes. So five years back, how you were thinking, you might not be thinking the same way. So your mind changes. So you have this particular body now. Now take any photo of you and see from the childhood. You would have had a different body. Your cells keep regenerating. So the reference point is our awareness, is our consciousness to understand that things around us keeps changing. So in order to observe changes, there needs to be some particular reference point which does not change, which is our Atma, which is our soul. And the symptoms of the soul is our consciousness. So with our consciousness, we are able to perceive changes. Right? So what we need to understand very, very clearly is we need to perform things as our duty to Krishna. So Krishna has given us this particular body. Krishna has given us this particular family. And Krishna has given us the responsibility of cultivating a new child and taking that child closer to awareness of God or Krishna. So if we see in this particular way and if we do our duties and if we have goals that are actually aligning to our purpose of life, then we will actually not get disturbed by these happiness or sadness. Because end of the day, we are responsible for our actions. So our actions determines the results. So we make our destiny. Our choices decides our destiny. So each and every time, whenever we are happy, whenever you are too happy or whenever you are too sad or whenever you are happy or whenever you are sad, it is best not to make any decisions because we get carried away a lot. So any decisions that you make when you're happy or any decisions that you make when you're sad may always, may or may not turn right. So you will have a particular set of impression on that particular situation. And because of that, you make drastic decisions. So always when your mind is agitated with happiness, your mind is actually agitated in a good way. There is a lot of good chemicals released by your brain. There is a lot of good dopamine or serotonin that makes you feel happy. Right? So, and then when you're sad, you may not want to talk to certain set of people. You may not want to respond to certain set of changes around you. You may not want to even work. You may not want to do something. You just want to take some time to, you know, Find out, integrate your emotions. So basically, whenever you're emotional, emotional doesn't mean that one has to be sad. Emotions can be like positive or emotions can be negative. And even in every negative emotions, you have an opportunity to understand more about yourself. So what? whenever you have difficulties, right? whenever you are in distress, don't make any decisions. Let the dust in the mind settle down. So let's all try to understand things in the right perspective. So when you're not happy, right, which means you're sad. Okay, so now pause for a minute, breathe, disconnect from everything and just try to connect with yourself. Try to think, what is that which is making me sad? So there is a scientific principle of asking the question, why five times? When you ask the question, why five times? It actually points you out to the exact problem. So this is what the modern science says. So when you keep asking why, 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 okay, why it is making me sad? Okay, this thing happened. So why this thing happened? Because I made this choice. Okay, so when you made this choice, what you are actually thinking? Why did you actually make this choice? I wanted to achieve something. Okay, why you basically wanted to achieve this? Because I wanted this. So now when... You drill down like this and keep asking why, 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 why at one point in time, you will know whether your actual source of that particular happiness or actual, you can apply this for happiness as well. So with the actual source of this particular happiness, the actual source of this particular sadness, is it aligning with our goal, which Krishna says, which is the goals of human life? That is very, very important. So if we attach ourselves too much to the results. So we should always be attached to the goal, right? So we need a house because we need to make sure that our family or our parents are taken care of. They have given us this particular life. So for some people, house may be a goal, which is good. But in our, while achieving that goal, if you are following the proper principles, what Krishna says in Gita, 
and if you work towards your goal you will definitely get results and if you keep praying if you keep reading bhagavad gita so krishna says just do anything but don't get involved in four things no intoxication which means no smoking drinking no drugs and no meat eating and no gambling respect money when money is being given to you don't gamble here and there don't waste money and number four is no illicit sex no sex without any marriage or without any relationship so these all four things accumulate karma and your karma what you accumulate in this life you might face most of it in this life only right all those reactions will come to you so when we face all those difficulties we we might we might think that okay this life i have not done anything like this why am i facing this so you might have your karma from your previous lives as well which has still not taken effect so what krishna says when you follow the principles in bhagavad gita so when that karma actually comes to you you will have the strength to bear that particular stress so this is how you manage stress as well so the more and more you are aware of your particular identity as we are all part and parcels of krishna the easy things become to deal with the problems so when you ask this five whys and you know keep drilling down to a particular thing you will be able to pinpoint that okay this particular thing is what is making me sad okay now why is this making me sad how is this important to me is this thing really really important to me what is my goal of life so it is very very important right when you have certain things that you are steering towards which you don't want to change write that down in a piece of paper it's very very important right so tomorrow when you are you know writing down you can even do weekly or you can even do monthly like long term goal short term goals what i want to achieve in this particular month right so when you wake up every day you know think that i want to achieve some things these day you might go to a job i need to go to a job so have a particular goal so don't think that okay i'm working 9 to 5 and i'm not doing anything after that so what what time do you get up what time do you sleep so in between okay say that okay this much number of hours i'm going to work and i need to look after myself i need to look after my home i'm going to spend this much amount of time there i'm going to spend this much amount of time to sleep so you're taking care of your body you're taking care of your needs to maintain your body so it is always good to have some certain set of small small goals or activities to even take care of your soul as well so tomorrow your soul is what if you have your soul nourished if you have your soul purified and then your goals you will get more clarity in your mind so whatever goals you set will be very aligned and very purposeful so when we don't have a strong purpose that is when we get disturbed if your goal is not aligned with the purpose so if you all try to understand that you know this particular object is what going to give me happiness and if in no way you're using that object in service of krishna say for example when you say that i love my family i love my kids so the right understanding we should come from is we love this because this has been given to us to maintain we don't own them right everything has been given to you so that is the right understanding so when we start seeing things in different perspective then our happiness or sadness or stress it all completely vanishes so it's all about the way you see things in different perspectives so that's what krishna says in this particular verse it all comes from sense perception so if your senses are purified which means you are seeing with better clarity so the vision you have towards your life is spiritual in nature and it is not material in nature so we know that our body keeps changing we know that we are going to live for finite number of years we know that With, according to whatever desires we have in our heart if we die with that particular desire then accordingly you will get the next body so how to stop this at the time of death what you are thinking that really really matters so if at the time of death you think about krishna then you reach to that particular spiritual planet in whichever form you want to worship krishna but at the time of death if you are attached to your mother or if you are attached to your father or if you are attached to your kid then you might become a father in the next birth where you are able to you know fulfill the desire of your kid or you might become a mother so i'll tell you one story with this instance right there was a very very famous king called uh, 
Bharat Maharaj. Right. So what he did is he was really, really enlightened. He had so much of affection and so much of love for God. So he practiced bhakti really, really deeply and he realized that, okay, I have nothing to do in this world. Now I want to go and perform all this yoga process. I want to sit alone. I want to meditate. And then I want to go to Krishna. I want to leave my life, leave this body. I want to leave my body and go back to Krishna. So that was his understanding. So he went to a forest. He started meditating very, 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 very deeply. And then he was able to see the four-handed Vishnu form, the Paramatma form. But somewhere, one day he got really distracted. See, he saw a deer. So he saw a deer struggling with like a broken hand or a broken leg. I don't know the exact story, but the essence is he saw a deer struggling and he started providing shelter to that deer. And every day he used to take a lot of care and a lot of affection of that particular deer at one point in time. He even forgot the purpose of why he went to forest. So that is how, you know, this world keeps distracting us. So at one point in time, one day, he did not find this deer. The deer went somewhere. So because of that, he, he had a nice temple set up in the forest. He used to worship Krishna. He used to do aartis every single day. So one day when he felt that the deer was not seen, the deer has gone somewhere, he became so depressed. He started spending so much of time going in search of that particular deer, forgetting his purpose. He stopped doing the aratis. He stopped doing worships. He stopped offering fruits or boga, flowers, everything to Krishna. His worship got affected. So then what happened at the time of his death? He died thinking about that particular deer. So in his next life, he got the body of the particular deer. But what we need to understand here is Krishna was so, so merciful. When he was born as a deer, all the activities which he did for Krishna, the bhakti, Krishna gave him one favor. He was able to remember his previous life alone. So when he was born as a deer, he performed so much of austerities, like he performed so much of sacrifices. He still remembered how he went and took shelter of one of the ashrams where different Vaishnavas are worshipping Vishnu and Krishna. So he went to that ashram, he had as a deer, the deer didn't eat anything, it was eating just small blades of grass so that it keeps on thinking about this particular purpose. So he was able to fix his mind on Krishna as a deer. So what happened when he left his body, then he again got a human form of body in the subsequent birth and he was born among a very, very favorable family where he can actually worship Krishna and then get liberated. So what can we understand from this particular story? The first thing, to practice any form of devotion or to practice bhakti, doing it alone is very, very difficult. You always need to be surrounded with like-minded people. So when you want to actually practice any form of devotion or any form of devotional service, practicing alone is not an option. So if you want to have a particular taste, you need to be associating with people who have that particular taste. So you need to be surrounded by people who are spiritual in nature so that you can actually go, grow in bhakti. Bhakti is a creeper. Number two, when you are actually even performing bhakti or when you are doing anything, so once you achieve your goal, so if you are attached to the results, when you want to have a certain set of goal, so say for example, getting a house is my goal because I want my kid to grow up in a very nice environment so that my kid can also be more focused in studies and I can also teach more of bhakti to my kid. So having a house and making my family secure is my responsibility because Krishna has given this family to me. So now towards that you might change your job or you might study something new which will give you all these particular goals. In between, you will have so much of money which comes out of it. So don't get too much attached to particular results. You might have an opportunity, you might have different opportunities in between. So if you get attached too much to the results, which is produced by that particular goal or which is produced by the journey towards that particular goal, if you attach to that result, that is when you get distracted. So we should always see what things are necessary for us to progress in our spiritual journey. 
right? So anything which you have a separate interest that you are not spiritually aligned with your decisions or if you are not spiritually aligned with your goals, then you will have this particular problem which is happiness or distress and that can influence your decision making. So that is the right understanding. So you don't get distracted in between your goals, right? You're not detaching yourself from the goals, but you're detaching yourself from the journey towards the, the results. The journey also you are being attached, but the results what you get out of it. Say, for example, when you follow the four regulative principles and when you act according to dharma, then what Krishna says in Gita is you will get all the wealth and you will get all the material opulence or the beauty, name, fame, money. Everything comes to you automatically because you follow the principles of dharma. It's not rocket science. Money is flowing everywhere. Right? All our education teaches is to maintain this body and how to make money. So at some point in time, we need to realize that what our ultimate purpose of life is. What is our actual goal? The ultimate goal is to have love for Krishna. At the time of death, we need to remember God. That is the only way to get out of this cycle of birth and death. So we need this human life is meant to be prepared for death. Right? So that is why practicing bhakti becomes very, very important. At the time of death, what is given in the Shastras is the pain which you face at the time of death it is similar to 1,000 scorpions biting you at the same place. That is how it is described in the Shastras, in the Puranas, the pain what you face at the time of death. So, if you engage your mind in Krishna and if you practice Bhakti, Bhakti Yoga, what Krishna says in Gita, chanting the holy name, going to the temple, reading Gita, that gives you strength. Right? That gives you strength to remember Krishna and he will make sure that you don't face that particular pain or he makes it easy for you so you won't be afraid of death. So we need to die properly so that we can live properly. Right? Well, how are we living properly? We all have our spirit souls. When you leave this body and if your consciousness, mind and your soul is purified, then according to your desires on how you want to actually love Krishna. You can love Krishna as a parent. You can love Krishna as his friend. You can love Krishna as his lover. You can have different moods of love for Krishna. You can worship Krishna as a servant. So there are like various moods in which. So according to your mood on how you want to love Krishna, accordingly you will be sent to a spiritual planet with the spiritual body in which you can love Krishna. So there are spiritual planets and there are material planets. So we are in the material world, which is Earth is one of the material planets. Similarly, there are millions of material planets. So this is how you need to understand. So I'll tell you one more story. Okay. So we all know Mahabharata. Okay. So in Mahabharata, Duryodhan wants to kill Arjuna. Okay, I'm not going into details. We all know that Duryodhan, leader of Kauravas, and Arjuna was the leader of Pandavas. Duryodhan wants to kill Arjuna. He had so much of envy in his heart. So he goes to his mother Gandhari and his mother says that, okay, fine, I can give you a boon because of which you can become invincible. So what happens? She says to Duryodhan that in the night, after everybody sleeps, when the moon comes, you have to come in front of me completely naked. Okay, I'll be tying my eyes. And once you have come in front of me completely naked and I open my eyes, then you will be given so much of power and nobody will be able to kill you. So this is what she said. And Priya then said, okay. And he left that particular place. And in the night, then when everybody slept, when the moon rise, after the moon rise, then he like removed all these clothes and he started walking towards his mom. And on the way, he meets Krishna. Krishna says, hey, what are you doing? He says, this is what my mom said. I'm like, but still, you cannot go, she is your mother, you cannot go naked in front of your mom. This is very disrespectful. This is very disgusting. Then Duryodhan said that, yeah, okay, fine. 
agreed. Then he just at least put one small piece of lungot or some one small piece of cloth to cover below your waist a little bit so that you show some respect to your mother. This is not how you go in front of your mother, which was very, very logical. Then he went. And then what happened? See, he went in front of his mother. His mother asked him, are you completely naked? And he said, yes. And then she opened his eyes. So all his body, except for that particular portion where he was wearing that cloth, all his body was completely made as strong as iron. Right? So, but only for that portion of his cloth, where he was in his thighs, which he was not covering, that is where he was beaten and killed. So this is how Krishna protects his devotees. So whenever we are stuck in life or whenever we are distressed, if we take Krishna's name or if we take Bhagavad Gita, you will always have solutions. So just randomly, when you take and when you try to take one step towards Krishna. So Shastras are like mother, are like our mother. That is how we'll have to look at the Shastras. Any book, whenever you are distressed, which means just pray, that say, Krishna, whatever you have put me through is for you, for your interest, and you want to make me learn something out of this particular situation. Right? And then when you start reading, then you get answers, you get more clarity. You at least will get clarity to navigate through that particular problem. Right? So, Bhagavad Gita can be your daily companion as well. So this is how you'll have to understand and this is how you'll have to approach. You should not approach Gita saying that Krishna, I want this to happen. I want that to happen. So problem with us is we have a problem and we have a solution. Krishna, can you please make this happen? That is not how it works. If you have a problem, then trust in Krishna's intelligence. He wants us to learn something, right? You should have faith. You say that Krishna, you have put this in front of me. Now I have to learn something out of it. So please give me clarity. How do I overcome this problem? And what do I have to learn? So that I can navigate through this with your help. And I can practice my bhakti properly. I can be more devoted to you. So this is how we'll have to understand Bhagavad Gita. So we'll always have to make a very, very nice habit. So Krishna will not leave us alone. If we take one step closer to Krishna, he takes 1,000 steps closer to you. And it is his responsibility to make things easy for you. But you should have the right desire or intention in your heart. That is your responsibility. Keep your heart pure. Keep your heart soft. Don't have any lusty desires. Don't have any like desires which is not aligned with Krishna's interest. Like procuring too much of wealth. Having too much of attachment for material objects. So it is all not favorable. Because these are all like thorns in your heart. So when you chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which means you are inviting Krishna to come and sit in your heart, right? The super soul is there inside your heart. We are this Atma and the Paramatma is also sitting in your heart. So you are inviting this Paramatma to nourish your soul, to give that happiness. That is how you derive happiness from inside. But when you have all this anger, greed, envy, pride and all this lust towards material objects or lust towards man or woman. Like these are all like thorns in your heart. So when you invite Krishna, it is like you are asking Krishna to come and sit in your thorns on top of the thorns. So you will always have to keep your heart pure when you read Gita. You will always have to keep your heart soft. You know, it's not ideal for Krishna to come and sit on that particular thorns. You will be uncomfortable. So you give what is in your heart and you make room for Krishna. That is how we do. So if you have no more money, if you're not able to go to temple, so we give what we have in our heart to Krishna. If you have so much of love, or if you're running a restaurant, you will have a lot of food, then offer food free for people, offer prasadam free for people. If you have more money, you know, you give little money and make little space for Krishna. So that he'll come and sit in your heart when you chant. Right? You follow dharma and Krishna is blessing you with so much wealth. You can either feed people, you can keep some for your family. Or you can fix a percentage of money. It can be even 1% or 2%. Say 2% of whatever you're earning, you make sure that you donate it for a good cause. Right? When you say donation, it is not given to some organization. You need to make sure where your money goes also. Because money generates karma. If you give it to some organization where they are not consuming your money properly. Or consuming means that money should be utilized for other person to make it easy for them to reach Krishna. 
that is you should make sure that you would trust a particular organization who does that and give the money or trust a particular temple or you know help in the development of a temple so that they can you know do their services to lord properly so if your money vary or giving your money you should be very very careful so when we say that for principles you make sure that you don't even participate in mentally or directly or indirectly in all those so when you do your job or when you are in a particular job and when you make money like that you'll keep getting more and more money krishna will bless you this is the formula but if you are attached to that particular money nothing wrong krishna won't punish you but at the time of death next birth you will be in a very very aristocratic family where there is so much money and so much wealth so you'll carry on again in that particular family so in that particular family they might have a lot of enjoyments or you'll get birth in higher planetary systems higher planetary systems are designed to enjoy so it is not very very favorable for bhakti so you like only so much of karma good karma you are accumulating right by getting attached to money you are not for you are not breaking any regulatory principles you are earning so much of money so what will happen which means you will take birth in higher planetary systems above this earth there are seven planets so there it is only designed for enjoyment so you can go enjoy and when your karma is over you will have to come come back to earth then practice bhakti and only then you will get liberated until then you keep dying you keep taking birth you keep dying at the time of disease you keep taking birth so i'll tell you one last story for today how krishna doesn't give up on his devotees so we know draupadi right all of us know draupadi who is the wife of pandavas so bhishma from gauravas he took an oath to kill arjuna so bhishma is a proper devotee of krishna so he is like a brahmachari who preserves his semen for the benefit of humanity so that's a very very long story so whatever oath he takes he's blessed with power that that will definitely come to and he'll be able to achieve it he is bestowed with so much of powers so draupadi starts getting really really worried and she approaches krishna then krishna says you go when bhishma is sleeping okay and you actually touch his feet so according to bhishma anybody who touches his feet he has to give a blessing and once he gives his blessing he will not take, take it back okay so this is the quality of bhishma he is a proper brahmana so now the topi says okay fine how will i do that he says okay when he is sleeping in the night you silently go to his room so at the sat with that time what krishna says okay fine it, when the night time came and bhishma was sleeping top the was slowly going in the krishna says wait 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 to move your slippers it has lot of ankle bells you move your ankle bells and all the slippers and you leave it outside and then you go inside so that bhishma won't wake up if he wakes up all of a sudden before you actually touch his feet then he will know he asks why are you here and until you touch his feet he won't be able to get his blessings so our whole plan will go for a toss so then what happens she leaves her ankle bells she leaves her slippers and everything and she enters and she touches the feet of bhishma dev and bhishma dev gets up oh dear what have you done why have you done this i can without you know recognizing he says no 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 you live long you live for so many years you will you will be like uh, so bhagyavati something like that he says so which means that bhishma dev technically cannot kill her husband so when he is thinking that then krishna takes draupadi's slippers and ankle bells in his hand and he walks into the room and then bhishma dev was laughing okay now why krishna has done this because he wants to protect arjuna so bhishma dev knows that they are all going to lose in this particular war but still he was doing his duties because he was part of a particular clan kauravas so he understood at that point in time okay you now krishna has decided to protect arjuna so whatever we do doesn't matter whatever harm we want to cause there is protection for arjuna from krishna so krishna was carrying draupadi's slippers in his hand at that point in time so this is this was the effort and responsibility which krishna takes to protect his devotees when the draupadi is to him for shelter during time of difficulties
right? But her heart, one thing to understand is her heart was so pure. So Krishna was carrying her slippers in his hand. Right? So each and every time when we are stuck in life, we'll have to sit down, ask that five eyes, reflect and find out what is that object of satisfaction which we have put our happiness in. Now, what is actually making me sad? Who is making me sad? Now, is that favorable or unfavorable for me? So now, for example, if that particular person is your family member, we must not, you know, take a drastic decision that you are going to talk to that particular person. We have some responsibilities. Again, Krishna, in the Acharya's commentary, Prabhupada talks about the responsibilities we have. You know, Arjuna is a Kshatriya. He talks about that in his book. So he still has to do his duties. So when you are born in this particular world, you have dharma towards your body. Right? How you have to maintain this particular body by practicing proper dharmic principles. So without by propering these four regulative principles, you have dharma towards your society. You have dharma towards your family. Right? You have dharma towards your country or your society and community and you have dharma towards your country. Right? So, this particular government has given me opportunity to stay in this particular country and, you know, have a life here. You should always have some sense of responsibility towards your government. That is why you vote. You vote. You have some sense of responsibility towards your community. Right? You have some sense of responsibility towards your culture. You take part you participate in most of the culture, a lot of the festivals or the religious activities. That is the dharma. Okay? And you have dharma towards your body. Make sure your body is pure. And there is a dharma towards the soul as well. That we should not forget. The dharma of the soul is to love Krishna. So we need to make the soul is resting in our body. We need to make this body in a favorable position to enable our soul who we actually are to connect Krishna. We should not identify ourselves with this body or with this dress we have, with this country that we live in. I'm Indian. I'm American. You know, I, I work for the army. I'm Western. No, I, I follow Western culture. So that's not how we should think. So this body is given to us for a particular purpose. And we need to make sure that what is the understand what is the purpose. That the purpose is to take the soul. So the journey of the soul is very, very important. So we should always have some time dedicated in our lives to contribute to the journey of the soul. And how we dedicate that time? Only when our mind is calm and purified. With any form of yoga, you calm the mind. But how you purify your mind is by chanting mantras. Okay? So, any questions from whatever we have discussed in today's class? Any questions on any of the obstacles that you're facing, some difficulties? You can be open. You can ask any question you have. So we can discuss, you know, nobody is going to judge you in this space. We are all on the same boat. As much as I talk how to navigate through problems, every day I am also learning. I have hundreds of problems too. It has not been really, really easy. But when I take shelter, when I open Gita or when I open Bhagavatam, I read for one hour. I don't get solutions to my problems, but I get better clarity. So when you get better clarity, whatever you think is a problem, will not be a problem. That we might be thinking too much. So we are thinking there is a problem because there is some element of fear which pre prevents us to get more clarity. And what why we don't have more clarity towards that particular situation is because of lack of knowledge. So for problems, material problems, we find spiritual solutions. Which when we purify your mind, then we'll be able to understand, okay, the way we are actually seeing things is the problem. The problem is not with that thing. We are expecting that thing to be in a particular way. That means we are perceiving that thing as reality. The way we see that particular thing, that is where the actual problem lies. Any question so far from what we have discussed in today's class? No questions? Looks like nobody has problems in life. Everybody seems so, so happy. Or you'll come with questions whenever you are 
facing problem. So this is the, you know, the essence of scriptures, right? So when I explain, things seem to be so, so clear. And when you read, imagine how much of clarity you will get. When you actually follow the process of calling Krishna, chanting will open up your intelligence to absorb more of this knowledge, more of this clarity. So when you read, make it a habit for a daily reading of 30 minutes and daily chanting of like 10-15 minutes of one mala or the japa mala, slowly, slowly you start you know accumulating spiritual knowledge. It will be very, very easy for you to navigate through problems. Right now everything may be fine and one day you will get married. One day you might, the relationship might not work the way you want. Or even before marriage you might fall in love, you might break up for various reasons. Or after marriage you might have fights with your husband or wife. And your kid will grow up. The kid might not listen to you. During that you will have a lot of problems. Then in between your parents will fall sick. You might be in a different country. You will know, all have to go through all of this. So sometimes in work you might have to go through stress. Because of your managers or because of your colleagues, you might get fired or this job might not make you happy or you might need more money. So you might have more needs in life. So validate things. Where is the needs coming from? Where I am putting my happiness on? If you depend on Krishna for your happiness, that will last longer. So for that, you'll have to build a relationship with Krishna. Krishna is also a person. He is a cowherd boy living in the spiritual world. So if you understand this and you call Krishna by his name, then he will make sure that he will, if you are you are calling Krishna because you want to be with Krishna, oh Krishna, I want to be with you. Please engage me in your service. That's the meaning of the mantra. So when there is love, which means that's a relationship between two people. Only when there are two persons, there is love. When there is exchange of emotions. That we all know. We agree, right? Now Krishna is also a person. You are making an attempt to connect with him. So now it is his responsibility also. He is the supreme God. He is the controller. Now if you have so much obstacles, whose responsibility is to make it easy for you, the path? It's he has equal responsibility as well. All you have to do is trust in the process. Trust Krishna. At the same time, make sure that your heart is clean. That is your responsibility. You cannot sit in one place and you know simply say that, okay, I trust Krishna. Krishna will do my work. No. You got this body, which means you'll have to perform certain activities as per dharma to maintain this body. Right? And you have to keep your heart pure. You have to keep your mind pure. Right? So we continue doing all our day-to-day -day activities to maintain our body, to maintain our social dharma, our personal family dharma and everything. And then at the same time, we practice a bit of bhakti as well. Okay? Any questions? If not, we can wrap up today's session unless somebody has any interesting problems or interesting views we can discuss. All good? Indra, Nikita? No questions? Amrita, Devti, Disha? All good? So Disha, this is your first class. How did you feel? Any question? Um, no, it was really good. Uh, as th this was my first class, uh, the problems maybe I was facing, I guess I got the clarity to it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Because, uh, you know, I just landed in month of February and this is my second month right now. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, you know, the feeling of being alone, being loneliness, away from your parents, away from your friends, this thing, uh, the, the sadness, the pain maybe uh, maybe this thing got a clarity that yes everything takes a time just trust the mm. process maybe uh, i should just give some uh, i should just wait for some time i should just give myself some time i guess everything will be all right i feel and yes. by uh, listening to the first loka because this was my first class and this was my first loka mm. i think all of my clarity all of my uh, tensions my my worries my ten my everything has got got a clarity and i guess this mm. will help me a lot and yeah. i'm now i am eager to learn another shlok that will just simply it will easily apply in my life and i'm really excited now what i am going to learn in the next loka so I'm feeling really good. 
nice nice very nice so Nabia, what are your realizations your reflections from this particular shloka what did you learn so no, everybody um, will tell me a couple of lines on what they learned from this shloka um basically from this shloka uh, the main the main part which I got to learn was like uh, always try to be in a situation if it is bad if it is worse then try to be calm if it is happy mm. if it is joyful just try still try to be calm because if you if you just just as you said in 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 the bad times you make if you make a decision it's it's always gonna end up in a bad a bad thing and if in a good if in a good moment if you if you make a situation it may be a bad thing or a, it could be a good uh, decision also so mm. always try to be calm and try to just uh, go with the flow just trust the process mm. in which you are so i guess that thing i learned in yes. this thing so make sure you connect your process with krishna so the ultimate yeah. goal of life keep learning yeah. with the Keep chanting the mantra for a few minutes every day. So yeah. step step by step, eventually you will get to a better place where you can be devoted to Krishna as well as to all your daily responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Nabia, now let's hear from you. I think it's got like scientific reason as well. Like mm -hmm. before I, I was trusting God but not really 100%. Mm -hmm. And then um later on i come to realize like yeah we sometimes we get worried sometimes like sad days they are sad days sometimes happy days so in sad days we're getting so stressed mm. uh, and then i come to know like at least there is a god we can surrender some like we can surrender him everything like our happiness and sadness as well so that we can be free from it and enjoy our life and he will handle everything yeah, and yeah. I think th that's the that is the trust from the God we getting, and then that's relieving our mind from stress stress free. Mm. And I have realized even that's the reason, like in our country, many people not getting the dementia and mental health problem because they are more connected, more spiritual um to the God. Mm. Um, yeah, and I think yeah, it's scientifically yeah, related yeah. as well, just to. Um, yeah, but... relieve all the stress, depression, anxiety, whatever is there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just be relaxed in the life and do the job nice. in the right way. Nice, nice, very nice, very nice. So, Nikita, let's hear a few words from you. What do you think? Mm, what I learned is um, nothing in life is permanent, even the happiness, sadness, whatever situation we are facing at the moment. So, we should not uh, be extreme even in the happiest moment yeah. and when we are sad like just be take a middle path and try to remain calm mm. yeah so and with you have to have the right clarity in your mind so you can deal with any kind of situations it can be in your personal life or at home at work so and other thing is like uh, I learned um, about uh, Krishna, how he helped his devotee. Mm. Uh, like I have watched Mahabharat uh, so many times as well. So the one episode of um, very popular episode is Draupati Chirharan mm. and how Krishna protected Draupati. Um, mm. So yeah, so you have to have the faith. Mm. So you have to surrender yourself. Okay. That all. And it was a very helpful session for me as well. Nice, nice, very nice. So, Revati, what are your realizations? Yeah, so everybody has problems. And uh, yeah, so we know that many times we know that these problems are temporary. Like, uh, I mean, everybody drives you nuts. Your parents might drive you nuts. Kids might drive you nuts. People at work might drive you nuts. We know it's temporary. The next day, it will not be the same. But Going through that situation that day is the task, even though we know uh, it's a temporary thing. Uh, I think I learned that, uh, you know, connecting ourselves with God, uh, doing more chanting, uh, you know, at that moment, you should not get uh, angry unnecessarily. Uh, so how to, to achieve that, it will be good if we can connect ourselves with God, doing mm -hmm. regular uh, meditation or praying to God or chanting 
so that will give us a better uh, calmness in mind and um, it will help us to go through those uh, situations better in life. Okay. Um, and also it says, sorry, yeah. uh, like the, our problem is only 10% and 90% is our only thoughts, senses. Very that's magical. what creating too much stress in our life. Yes. True. So yeah. that's when like we're going to believe on God, like this, mm -hmm. oh, it's 10%. Okay, God, God, you handle everything. And that's when like, yeah. And you can yeah. guarantee yourself to someone uh, you feel you feel like most of the weight out of you, right? Uh, mm. you all of the weight. Mm. Yeah. It, you like all you know, just a smile all the day. You will trust the God and leave your all the pain to the God. True. So yeah. to make sure that our heart becomes light, that is why whatever we practice daily, right? We'll be able that'll help you build that relationship with God. He's also a person. Yeah. So you will have that feeling you can go to temple you can go talk to god you know at least that also will make you feel good you know he will yeah. give to your problems you can go talk to him you can you know keep everything from your heart in front of him so this is what i have whatever solution you give i'll accept so that should be be the right understanding you should not give him the you know solution you know this is the problem this is the solution Please make this work. That is not the thing. That is not how we have to approach. You have to trust in his solution also. You should not yeah. think that, you know, use your intelligence and, you know, make him just a doer. You should trust on Krishna's intelligence as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's hear from Amrita. Amrita, so what are your realizations? Sorry, I'm just walking on that's the okay, That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, from today's uh, sloka, I, I, like, I learned to understand understand the importance of making decision in a neutral state when mm -hmm. our mind is not like very mm -hmm. sad or very happy. Um, mm -hmm. And then of course, like I always believe that whatever happens, so there's a quote that I always believed and then I could relate that quote with today's sloka that was like, whatever happened, life goes on. That's what I like always believed. And then it was something similar like, what happiness or sadness whatever the situation is all uh, temporary not permanent and it will change of course so uh, more than that like the more important thing practically I was like relating myself was about not making decision when I am on that uh, very happy or very sad state uh, or uh, rather I'll wait and uh, try to uh, have that state where I'm like more neutral or detached from the situation and think mm. clearly. So that is, yeah, that is more um, uh, practical. And then the thing mm. that I took from today's class. Mm. Thank you. Nice. Very nice. Adeep, let's hear from you also. Huh? Adeep, you're there? Hare Krishna. Okay, seems Adeep is in his job, so mostly. All right, so nice hearing from you guys. So, so be calm, so we don't have to get carried away. Everything lasts only for a certain amount of time. So let's not get agitated and make sure that we continue our practices, set some daily goals, and then lead our lives happily. Okay, all good. So let's meet next week, Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Eh? As Saturday. Now we are back to all uh, Saturday classes. Yeah. Next week it will be Saturday 6.30. Okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. See you. See you.